Hey, what's up everybody? It is Mr. Boylan back for some more fun. Today, in this video, we are going to name covalent compounds using International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry, IUPAC. Nomenclature rules. Two things we're gonna do. We are first gonna name a binary covalent compartir. compound from its formula. Dose, we are gonna write the formula of a binary covalent compartir. compound given its name. Okay, so as I take a look at my screen, I've got some examples of binary covalent compounds. I know they're binary because there's only two elements involved, and I know they're covalent because in each example, the elements involved are two non-metals. So, important to recognize that binary covalent compounds are named by adding prefixes to the element names. And those prefixes that you will have to memorize are on the screen in front of you and they're in your notes. Part of the reason why students find this easier is because we're already familiar with those prefixes and what they mean. And you will use a prefix in front of the name of the first element in the formula if more than one atom of it is present. And you'll use a prefix always in front of the name of the second element in the formula. And the second element will use the form of its name ending in IDE. So let's take a look at some examples, shall we? N2S4. My prefix for two is di, so I end up with dinitrogen. My prefix for four is tetra, so I end up with not tetrasulfur, but tetrasulfide. Ni3, because it's the first element, I don't need a prefix if there's a subscript of one. So we're starting out with just nitrogen. My second element, which will always have a prefix, is gonna be triiodide. Xef6. Again, my first element, no prefix, because there's a subscript of one. So we've got xenon hexafluoride. CCl4. Carbon, again, no prefix. Tetra chloride, P2O5, diphosphorus, pentoxide. Notice there, I've dropped the A in penta, I think just because it sounds better. Instead of saying pentaoxide, we just say pentoxide. This is why I do not teach English. All right, let's check out this doozy, CO, carbon, no prefix on that first element, monoxide. Notice here on the second element, we do have the prefix representing one. Also notice we drop the O in mono to avoid saying something like manuxide. Take a moment, pause the video, check out the formulas, check out the names. Recognize that that first element is always gonna have a prefix unless it's one. The second element is always gonna have a prefix no matter what. Okay, let's talk about doing the reverse. What if we wanna write the formulas? Well, you're just gonna check out the prefixes in the names that indicate the number of atoms of each element. Keep in mind that if no prefix is present on the name of that first element, there is only one atom of that element in the formula. But you should always see a prefix on the name of the second element, but keep in mind that that second element will have its ending changed to IDE. So if you're looking for oxide on the, on the periodic table, you're never gonna find it. Remember that it's changed its ending from oxygen. Let's do some thrilling examples. Nitrogen dioxide. No prefix on that first one indicating one nitrogen. The prefix di indicates two oxygens. So we've got NO2. Important, this is not the nitrite ion. And I know that because it's not charged. It also doesn't say nitrite ion in the name, but that's confusing for students when we're first starting out. Diphosphorus pentoxide. I've got two phosphorus, five oxygen. Xenon tetrafluoride. Xe, F4. Sulfur hexafluoride. SF6. Again, take a moment, pause the video. Don't have too much fun. Summon it up, take a look at those prefixes and their corresponding subscripts. You've got them in your notes. Generally not too difficult because we use these prefixes in a lot of other things. Finishes up, covalent compounds. Have a fantastic day.